Clovis was the first to unite all of the Frankish tribes, eventually conquering much of Gaul, and then started a new era for the Franks as he adopted Catholicism. But we start as his father, Childric of the Franks, with much of Gaul dominated by the Soissons and Visigoths. After the recent collapse of the Western Roman Empire, he faces a big challenge. Also, if everybody watching this subscribed to hit my new goal in no time, and it would mean so, so much to me. Thank you. So we start as Count Childeric. Now, we do have some special soldiers. They're not great, but as you can see, we get an extra 1,000 levies and 300 horsemen. So you know what? I can't complain. And hopefully that is going to help us take all the Frankish lands. As you can see, we have a decision to unite the Frankish tribes. So I'm going to try and do it in this life. Then, of course, once Clovis does take over. Hopefully with him, we can start working towards the big goal of taking Gaul. All the Frankish tribes, I'm imagining, we start right here. And if we go to culture, we can see we kind of just need these two people's lands. And hopefully that is all the Frankish lands. So we're not going to waste too much time. I am going to go down a learning tree just to try and get an extra few years out of this character. Go down the whole of body tree because we are already 56, right? So we want to make sure we don't die too soon. We'll start educating our child as well. And I think we waste no time and we just go straight Conquer County, maybe, and just start taking some of these people's lands. We don't have Illustrious just yet. We're just a little bit away from Illustrious. So we can't do duchy claims, but we can get some counties. So we're going to start the video with a war straight away. We're going to take Cambrai. So we're going to raise Alt and just march. You know what? He's attacking my lands. So we'll just march over there, destroy him, and then siege this. Hopefully without even being contested. Yeah. And of course, we do have now a truce. So we're going to do it with you as well. We're just going to conquer county and just work through them like that until we're able to do a full duchy war. There we go. 100% on that one as well. So we've already taken two counties, which is nice. We can create a cadet branch, but probably going to save that decision for when we play as Clovis because you do get some prestige. So it'll probably be quite helpful then because we are going to want to get into Exalted Among Men. So we can use like a Kingdom Caster spell. I maybe take on these guys or the Visigoths. So we're going to save that. Okay. And one of my daughters did just die. She did have Typhus. So we are down now to three children. Great. The Frankish invasion. For centuries, the Romans had greedily kept the fertile lands of Gaul under their control. And it was only through Roman weakness in which we were allowed to settle the province's northern frontiers as the empire's Foderati. The Western Roman Empire had recently collapsed. And the last remaining vestiges of Roman authority in the West lies in the domain of Swasson. The ruler of Swasson is already a fragile one, with the last domain beset on all sides by forces hostile to a Roman-governed polity. As we were the first of the Germanic tribes to settle in Gaul, our claim over the region is strongest, and it is time to lay the Roman rule to rest in Western Europe. Send the call. Oh, what is this? We can start a war. Oh, wait, war? I didn't even know about this. Right, we start a war with their king. We get an army of 11. Is that 11,000 men? What is the war for? Invasion. So do we get all his lands? Oh, wait, okay. My plan was to settle the Frankish tribes in this guy's life, and then as Clovis, try and take that on. But, I mean, if we get this opportunity, I think it'd be stupid to say no. Oh, and the two people we fought, our nephew and half-brother, have also joined in. Okay, this is big. I was not expecting to get help like this, considering I did just take some of their land as well. But, yeah... Let's look at these men then. Um, Frankish glory hounds. 1,500 bowmen, 1,000 light horsemen, and 1,500 light footmen, as well as 7,000 levies. That is actually massive. Let's look at the war goal. So actually, yeah, if we win, we actually take all of this. We gain 600 fame and the uh, allies share 600 prestige. We do get a few vassals. Oh, my half-brother. I imagine my nephew as well. Oh, that's interesting. So we'll get some of these guys as our vassal, it looks like. Oh, right. We can jump into a fight right here. So let's do that. Defeat most of their armies. They don't have any allies either, it doesn't look like. So they're kind of on their own, which is great for us. And we've got quite a few people supporting us, all of our family. We're up 75% already and we haven't actually sieged anything. We've only just defeated their armies. I wonder... Wait, this Frankish glory hound will be inherited on succession? Oh, somebody escaped. So we lost some war score. But yeah, they're actually going to be inherited on succession. What we're going to do now is we're going to split them up. And we're just going to go recover 
some of our supplies. We don't want them to starve to death. If they're going to be inherited as well, they're going to be very useful to keep around. I can't split this army for some reason, so it looks like they're going to have to take attrition. I don't know. Oh, there we are then. Yeah, we couldn't split this one. Not enough regiments in the army. So it's all the levies. We can't split the levies, so they were just starting to starve. But as you can see, we've hit 100% and we have just won the Frankish invasion. So we could enforce that. We, of course, are now a king. So we can put all our banners up that we have. Stand all the armies down. And just like that, we're Frankia. I did not expect it to be that easy to get this point. I was genuinely just going to focus on getting all the Frankish tribes and then taking France and stuff. But I'm not going to complain. And we, of course, now can take the decision to unite the Frankish tribes. So the time has come. The unification of the Franks. After years of division, the Franks can at last be considered a unified people, much like the Visigoths and the Burgundians. With both sides of the Rhine River unified under a single banner, a new era dawns upon the kingdom of the Franks, unified at last. Well, this definitely took a different turn than I planned, but it's nice to see we are now the Frankish kingdom. Of course, the Eastern Roman Empire still going quite strong. Italia, the Visigoths, we are going to have to fight and maybe Burgundy. So that is something we're going to have to face. And I think in real life, it was Clovis who become Catholic. So maybe that's something we will do once we do play as Clovis. So I think for the rest of this guy's life, we just plan on taking the rest of this year. Ignore the Visigoths and Burgundy. They are allied to each other, but we can probably just ignore them for now and start some wars like Conquer County. Simple, easy wars. We probably only need our men at arms for. Yeah, so we just need our men at arms for that. And Clovis has come of age. And Clovis picked up flamboyant trickster. So for intrigue, he's not fantastic, but I'm sure what he'll do. Maybe. Or at least I hope so. But we have taken another county now as well. So we're not going to stop. We're going to keep going for it. I don't know if our men at arms are going to be enough for this war. Yes, they are. Nice. But we can enforce another war. Ooh, that could be a problem. So it looks like Cornwall has actually taken some, uh, something to do with the inheritance. It's happened to me before when I've played over here. Some guy dies and then it gets inherited into one. So that has happened, which could definitely make things a little bit more awkward for us. Now, I want to see, of course, if you're not aware, the Fallen Eagle has like trade routes and like trade nodes. So if I check trade nodes, is there not one in France? I thought there was one in France, but maybe not. No, it doesn't actually look like there's a trade node in France that we could upgrade for easy money. So that is disappointing because you can make a lot of money from them. But we're going to build up our men at arms a little bit. We have some pikemen and siege towers. So I'm thinking maybe we just get some bowmen. Don't have to be anything crazy, but just a little bit. So we can declare war against you. You do have some allies, but we can take duchy and hopefully we'll have no problem taking all of this. You know what? I'm going to ignore their armies and I'm just going to siege as fast as possible all his land because it's not too much of it. And if we siege it all, the war should end. There we go. So we can enforce that as well. We're making pretty good progress. Now this is yeah, another duchy. I thought it was just a county, but no. Now we can probably do... Where's our men at arms quick? Yeah, we can probably do this with just the use of our men at arms again because most people nowadays, like so early on, they're mainly just levies. So just a few stacks of random men at arms will defeat them. Wait. This duke, my vassal, has attempted to murder my wife. Yeah, throw him in jail. God, everybody's trying to murder her. Why? We're going to throw them both in jail. We are executing them both. They did attempt to murder the wife. So I'm not quite sure how that's tyranny when they've literally been discovered trying to murder your wife. I, I, I'm not quite sure how that works, but we're going to execute them both. I think that's very much deserved, but we've won that war as well. I find it weird, like the rules of what you can and can't like revoke titles or execute people for. You think, surely in real life, if you were the king and someone was plotting to murder your wife or your family in general, you would have every right to just execute them, but apparently not. Oh, this guy is insanely weak. What is happening? So he's trying to defend a war from Britannia Prima. So while he's so weak, we could just start the war to conquer a county, maybe. We're just going to take our men at arms for now to do the siege in of the county. The Gothic threat. As we settle in our new and fertile lands, we must secure our borders from all sides. That especially includes the southern border. The vicious Goths have had their eyes on Upper Gaul ever since they cursed us with their presence. And now I receive reports of fortifications all along the border. A clear message of war. We, the Franks, should not stand idle to the clear humiliation. The 
sooner we strike, the better our chances. Wait, we're forced into a wall? I mean, I'd rather not. Okay, we yeah, we literally got forced into a wall. Great, yeah. Uh, now we have two walls going on. I didn't know about this before I made this uh, idea for the playthrough and started recording. I had no idea about all these events, but it's one of the things that goes to show just how much effort is put in the Fallen Eagle, as well as two insanely detailed bookmarks and more to come with all like the real life characters and stuff like that. Loads of events for different characters. It's just crazy. <laughs> I don't understand how they do it. Right, we're going to leave that other wall then. Wait, this is actually to take all the Visigoths land. This is broken. I did not know about this, but we're going to march them all, all together and just get straight in there. Like, oh, we died. King Chaldric of the Frankish kingdom has joined the Feast of Valhalla at 66 years of age. He died of old age. So we are now King Clovis. Now we do need to find a wife. I think we just go full alliance power. So pick up an alliance with you. I'm going to white piece the other wall, to be honest. Oh, and our primary title changed. But no, I do want the Frankish kingdom to be our main title. But yeah, Burgundy, as you can see, is involved. But yeah, we were going in for this fight. So we need to make sure all our armies have commanders and they're all going to join in that fight as soon as possible. Well, they've got to start being quicker. Oh, right. These guys have been caught out. So we're going to march them all into here and try and catch this other army that defeated our other ones. There we go. Yeah, we kind of got caught out, which means means we did lose one of the battles, but it seems we captured the king of the Visigoths. Nice. So, enforce that. Actually... <laughs> already. We're pretty big. Now, vassals may end up being a problem. They want to install someone else on the throne, so that could be a problem we have to deal with. We're not done yet, though. We've got a lot to still do, so things could definitely fall apart. So let's just build up our men-at-arms with the money we got. We have no light footmen, so we're going to get a stack of those as well. Let them build down. We'll have some pretty decent men-at-arms then, and we can create our cadet branch now. We may as well. So we're Merovin Tolosa, and that did give us some prestige, but who is this? My house member and uncle hates me. Wants a seat on the council over domain limit. Oh yeah, of course. So what we're going to do is we're going to grant all this away. It might actually stop the faction as well then as everybody won't hate me so much for being so over the domain limit. Nobody likes me. So we can literally put nobody on the council right now. So I think we're going to go down a stewardship tree. We need to try and increase our domain limit because I don't want to only hold five. That is really bad. But now everybody still hates me. Not rightful liege. Opinion of predecessor. Yeah, that's a problem. Unreformed. Yeah, so the Frankish people kind of like me, but then on the other hand, the non-Frankish people, which is a lot of them, really don't like me. So yeah, it might seem we got a really big kingdom really quick, which we did, but it's not exactly the most secure and it could fall apart at any moment. We can attempt to become a berserker. Go on then. Okay, so we sit by the fire chanting words of great power. I grit my teeth and close my eyes. Shivers run through my body. Something is stirring inside of me, embracing me. I wake up from my frenzy. Blood is all around me. Everybody is dead. Everyone is dead. What have I done? So we just killed Martin. Sorry, Martin. Marcia, Frotlidis, Burikan, and... So we just killed a bunch of people, basically. We've got Berserker, though. We gained 100 Dread, but we also gained 100 Stress. So yeah, we did just murder a bunch of people. Yeah, a lot of vassals just hate me. Our best bet is imprisoning them and getting enough prestige to where we can pass Limited Crown Authority and revoke their titles. We just got to be prepared now. What we're going to do is... So you're like the main person. What we're going to do is we're going to raise our troops right here. Raise our men at arms. And we come over here and we're going to raise all. So all our armies are raised ready for once they do trigger and push their demands. We're going to march straight in and try and end this war as soon as possible. And here it is. I will not be threatened. Right, what we're going to do is we're going to march straight over here then to start taking on some of their armies. If we can stop them all from joining up as one big like death stack, that's probably our best bet to actually win this. But we've really got to start catching them. We've literally just got to catch them all out before we begin our siege in. So there's 5,000 over here. So we're going to follow these ones. Trying to catch up though is so painful sometimes. Oh, they're fighting somebody else. So I think, yeah, we can join in on the side. So that's got to be most their armies, right? No, there's loads more down here. So let's march down here and hopefully don't run away and we can defeat all these. Yeah, it's looking good. And stop the siege. Yes, we did as well. We're up 32%. So now it's time to actually begin some sieging. Purchase truce. Who's this? Our neighbor. You want to purchase a truce for 55 gold? Uh, I mean, we have no intention of going to war with you, so I don't actually mind that. We're just going to let all our armies resupply, build our troop numbers back up, 
And I think we do have an ally we can call, so we may as well. Okay, so it looks like they have Olga marching back. So what we're going to do, I think we can beat them. 6,000 plus 3,000. They've got about 9,000 troops. They got about just under about 7,000 troops. So hopefully if we march in, all with commanders, we can defeat them. And this should make the war go in our favor. They have sieged some of our land up here. Oh, this is really close. Yeah, they have some fantastic troops there. They actually almost beat us. We're not going to waste any time. We're going to keep sieging now. So we're going to march right up here. All our troops on there. Big siege. 80%. Now what we're going to do, because they were just recently defeated, is don't let them get a chance to start sieging. They did get away with one though. But we're going to keep trying to defeat their armies, I think. And hopefully we don't lose any of these battles. We should be okay. But it does seem they do have the better troops. Come on, please. Oh, that was lucky. I think if they all joined at the same time, we actually would have lost that. But it does seem like we are going to get that as well. We're up to 89%. We're going to let our troops now kind of just resupply, build up their numbers again. And once they've built up their supplies, let's just keep chasing them. Do not let them get away. Oh my God, that was bad. Okay, that's fine. That could have gone so much worse then. But we're up, what, 100%? There we go. So we did siege a fair bit of land, but we have won that. And I'm hoping we can increase the count authority. And now we're going to revoke all of these people's titles. It may give us... No, it's not giving us any tyranny, which is good. Okay, so we just revoked all of their titles. We did get tyranny for some of them. I don't really understand what the difference was. Like, some of them we were getting tyranny for, some of them we weren't. So you can see, we are a massive tyrant now. So there may be some problems with that. But at the end of the day, what we can do now is we can grant titles to people of our faith and culture so we can actually make a proper Frankish kingdom now without trying trouble from other people from other cultures not getting in the way. Okay, so we granted away all the titles back to people who are actually Frankish and that. And then we had to like create some pretty big duchies, which I'm not happy about, but we were so overextended. We had way too many vassals. So that's kind of how we figured that out and sorted that out. Now, what I'm hoping to become lunatic buying, what I'm hoping for is if we ransom off prisoners, hopefully we can make some money, please. Yes. 800 we're up to. And what we're going to have to do, first of all, is probably just call a hunt. We need to bring our stress down really fast because it's way, way, way too high. And we'll hold a feast as well. So we may have some problems while we're still like a tyrant, right? But that won't last forever. So I'm not too worried about that. We can siege it. So we're going to start that right away. And by the looks of it, we should only need our men at arms. So that's not a problem. Yeah, we defeated a massive army with just our men at arms then. There we go. We're at 100% on that county. Now, what I'm going to do to try and save my overextension thing is we're going to create the Duchy of Brittany for 250. And then we're going to grant it to this guy right here. If we're not overextended, then we have a duke there who can manage those lands on his own without any input from me. Now, of course, our final goal is to create the Empire of Gold, but we still need a few more counties. Okay, so now we've got enough prestige. What we're going to do is we're going to start a duchy war for this bit of land right here. I'm going to see. This is a little bit tougher than some of our other wars, but maybe we can also just do this one with our men-at-arms because he is busy right now attacking down here for some land. So if he's busy doing that, that's a perfect opportunity for us to jump in and try and take this duchy. Now, I'm surprised with how much all my my vassals hate me that there's not a massive faction trying to take me down. Like, if you look, I am hated. It's because of my tyranny, but I, I don't really get that. They all rose up in a war against me, so I revoked their titles. Like, I'm surprised all my Frankish vassals don't like me because of it, because surely they'll be happy now that the non-Frankish and the Catholic rulers are gone, but apparently not. So, yeah, that is a bit of a problem. Nice, they've come into siege right next to us, so that's a perfect opportunity for us to get some easy war score by defeating their armies. Hopefully Hopefully. Yeah. So yeah, they look like they got some decent units actually, but we still somehow won that even though they had more men and they were quite good quality. Okay, nice. We just got twin sons. So we're going to make sure these are both educated well. But yeah, we are sieging another county right here. We're going to go in, stop them from unseaging this. And this war is pretty much as good as over. So one more thing to siege right here and it's probably done. Because then we will control the full war target. There we go. So we can enforce that as well. Look at that. The Frankish kingdom's looking quite good. I think we could definitely do with another stack of maybe... We have no light horsemen. So you know what? Let's get a stack of light horsemen down. As we definitely have the money. Now you need to get off my council. You're 
You're my spy master and you hate me. You really like me, my mother. So yeah, we'll put my mother as our spy master. And hopefully if there's any murder schemes, she can stop that. I didn't clock that guy on my court. I'm not sure how I can spot him there, but I'm so glad I did. Okay, so for the Empire of Gaul, we need just four more counties. Now, I would like to take this duchy, maybe. I'd much rather take it off the Visigoths than Burgundy. So if we can, if this is a duchy, yes, it is. Fantastic. If we go for that, that's one, two, three, four. So hopefully after this war, we may be able to form the Empire of Gaul. It's only been 23 years. It's exactly 500 AD so far. We're going to raise all and we're going to jump straight into sieging it. And I, you know what? We're going to look for a suitable alliance for our oldest son. So Linus, 14,000 men. He is at war, but that's a ridiculous amount of men. So we'll take that. And how about our oldest daughter? 5,000 men up in Ireland. So we'll take them. We may not need to call them, but it's always good to just have the allies there. Just in case we get defeated in battle or we can always call some backup. Right, we are going to try and stop them sieging. I don't know if we're going to make it in time to stop the siege. Yes, we did. They ran away. Nice. And they come in one by one as well. So that's even better for us right there. We're going to focus now on just fully sieging the war target as soon as possible. Another daughter has Typhus. If you remember, our first daughter did as our first character and she died. Right, so what we're going to do, we've sieged a decent amount. We're going to try and split them all up now to try and stop attrition completely wrecking all of our armies. And then we're going to carry on sieging the war target. And I think this is is the last county we need. Oh no. So this guy right here has actually just declared war on us for the Duchy of Brittany. We're going to see if we can call all our allies. We did make some powerful ones. Yeah, they've all agreed to join. We're going to just focus on this war for now. Try and get this war over with. And then once we have won this war, which we are of 94%, we've got ticking war score. So any second now. There we are, 100% on that one. So let's see. With our ally support, we're up to 30,000 and men. We're going to finish getting our supplies and then we're going to march up and hopefully win this. Losing this could be really, really bad for us because actually I think, yeah, we have the counties to actually form the kingdom. We only need the money. So if we did lose Brittany, <laughs> that would really suck. But let's go. We're going to march. We've got to get in there fast because they're doing a lot of sieging. Okay, so we're going to stop them all right here and right, let's go. Let's just see what happens. This could be a big loss for us, but we're going to try. Everyone has commanders. Come on. It's looking good. And our allies are right behind us as well. Yes, and another, what, 11,000 right there. Yeah, they stood no chance. Okay, I don't know what I was worried for, but we're going to start unseaging everything now. Completely remove their war score that they've built up. Now, they're up 44%, and we can probably win this now by just keep defeating their armies and not letting them siege anything. Okay, we actually won already. So we won, what is this for? 99 war score from our battles won. We gained 100 gold. Nice, but of course, we do need 1,000. So, so, yeah, there may be some trouble about to happen because there's also a dangerous faction and they want lower crown authority. So that would put us back down to autonomous vassals. So you wouldn't be able to revoke titles. But honestly, I'm not that bothered about it. Yeah, we'll give it up. That's fine because we just need to save money now. So a big drawn out war that was going to cost us hundreds of gold probably just to keep our crown authority. Probably not worth it. And we do have actually quite a few prisoners. So we're going to ransom some all of them. That's up to 350 gold. Not bad. We do need to give away some titles though. We're holding way too many over our domain limit, which is probably costing us quite a bit of money. Yeah, we're actually earning 6.6 .6 gold a month, so we're actually making pretty good money as well. Brittany is what? Suffering a, a tyranny war. Nice. As long as we don't face a big war, I'm happy. They're all too weak right now, so that's good for me. Oh, there we have it actually. There's a lot of problems going on. We have too many vassals. There's some big factions, but we can now actually create the empire of Gaul. So it's a thousand gold, which is insanely expensive, but there we have it. We are now a mighty Kaiser. Now in real life, Clovis converted to Arian Christianity. So I was going to go to Chalcedonian, but no, I think it will be this one we want to convert to. So we should be able to convert to the faith. Now, people are not going to be happy, but with my decision to convert to Arianism, I arranged for a priest to come to my court and conduct the rites. Glory to God. Now, I don't know if this is the correct religion I should be converting to, but it seems to be. So, here we go. We are now Christian. Now, in real life, this seemed to actually work, but, you know, this is CK3, <laughs> and your unreformed vassals are not going to take you converting to Christianity very lightly. So, we may be about to 
lose all our land. Let's just be honest. <laughs> there are 190% of my power. Oh no, right. We're going to try and stop this to end the video. See if we can manage it. You're the biggest person raising up. So what we're going to do, we're going to raise our men at arms and then say over here, we're going to raise all. And once this faction starts, I will not be threatened. We're going to dive right on our capital and we're going to call all our allies. Hopefully they all do agree to come and help. You won't. Uh, what we could do is give him an artifact and now hopefully yes he will accept we bribed him with an artifact yeah we need our allies to come over here and help us right now okay we're up 16 percent with that siege and now some of our allies have already arrived okay so we've done a fair bit of siege and we're getting our supplies back up so now I think it is time to go and fight their army. So we're going to march up straight towards them. Hopefully all our allies stick with us. It's saying we're going to win now. So let's jump in there then. Come on. This probably decides it. If we lost that, I think that would be just setting the whole war up for a loss. But actually, yeah, that actually let us win that whole thing. So we did actually manage to defeat our vassals. who are not very happy that we did convert. And now maybe goal will become Christian as Clovis made it in real life. But yeah, that actually ended up being a little bit easier than I was expecting it to. I had no idea about the special events that Childrick and, of course, Clovis would get to actually fight the Visigoths and such. So, yeah, well, that makes my life a bit easier, and it was still very much a lot of fun. And if you are wondering, this is the Fallen Eagle mod, which is just an incredible mod. So I will leave that linked below in the description. But yeah, thank you all so much for watching. Hopefully you did enjoy, and I'm going to end the video with a massive thank you to all the channel members. We have Intermio1, Endulus, and Victor Voss Anderson. But yeah, thank you all so much for watching and hopefully I'll see you in the next one.